Hey there, podcast world. It is FNO InsureTech here on the 470 Podcast Network, which isn't really a network. I just made that up. But this is indeed the FNO InsureTech Podcast with your hosts, Mr. Lee Boyd and myself, Rob Beller. Hi, Rob. Coming to you. Di- hey, Lee. <laughs> I didn't see you. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you today? Good. It's Podcast Monday. Yeah, this is a new one for us. Podcast Monday, <laughs> late in the afternoon. Uh, yeah, you got to love it. Well, we're trying to cram a bunch of stuff in this week because uh, at the end of the week, we go to PLRB, which we're very excited about. For those of you who don't know what PLRB is, that's our annual, one of our big conferences we go to every year. It's a big, uh, big to-do. We put a lot of energy into it. A lot of excitement around it. And we have a great, actually a great lead-in guest for that. Today we have the former CEO. Now, he, he doesn't have that title anymore, but he's kind of the same thing. He's, he's the, the guy that runs Symbility from Symbility Systems, James Swayze. Yeah, James, James is going to be a great guest today. I'm very excited to hear about uh, what they're doing now that CoreLogic uh, has, has acquired them. Uh, they are part of the CoreLogic family. Uh, I hope that we're going to get to hear a lot about data uh, and about where Symbility is going as a whole. What is on their roadmap? Sure. And as we talk about InsureTech, and of course the InsureTech world and the InsureTech space is so big now and and filled with so many companies. But once upon a time, 10 years ago, whatever, it wasn't so much that way. And it was a small space. And there was only a couple of real honest-to-goodness technology companies in Symbility and, of course, Exact. And, um, and some of their companion companies were the only ones out there. And so um, James and his company have been in the InsurTech space for a really long time. And so that gives them kind of a unique perspective, I think. And I'll, I'll look forward to hearing about that. Yeah, I'm excited to hear about it. You know, that's always the first question. Whenever you talk to a new InsurTech company, you're going to say, okay, well, are you integrated with Symbility or mm-hmm. with Exact? Right. It, it's the glue that holds right. our industry together whenever it comes to claims and 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 between the insurance com- the insurance company and the and the uh, insured. Uh, so you know they are they're big. They are big companies out there. Hey, podcast world, we are here on Podcast Monday with our very special guest, and I mean that, this is really a special guest, the CEO of Symbility, Mr. James Swayze. How are you doing, James? I'm uh, great. Thanks, Rob, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak to your audience. And my only correction I'll make to your intro statement is that I am uh, no longer the CEO of Symbility, but rather an executive with CoreLogic since CoreLogic recently acquired our business. Oh, that's interesting. So what was that title again? Executive? (laughs) <laughs> it's executive. I am in charge of the claims and civility platform okay. within the CoreLogic family. Okay. So do us a favor. Let's start by giving us a minute or, or two on what, what, what the heck. I mean, I think most of our audience knows you're a well-known platform in, in, in the insurance claims business, but why don't you give us a 30 seconds or a couple minutes on um, on Symbility. Sure. Uh, the Symbility platform has always been uh, a software platform focused on estimation and workflow around a property insurance claim. And uh, we have an open communication hub with uh, APIs that connect into every possible claims management system uh, that's operational in the market today, allowing us to seamlessly transfer information from the policy file and the claims file into our system, set up a claim, and then integrate with a number of different providers that uh, are working with the insurance company, whether it's somebody like an ITEL system or a Hover or a number of different um 
um, aerial image leap providers like an Eagle View and so forth. All of these other third-party companies integrate seamlessly through our APIs and allow the claims worker, be that a contractor, adjuster, or other third party, to have access to all of these systems under one secure platform and, uh, and then move that data seamlessly back into the claims management system, whether it's Duck Creek, Guidewire, or a long list of others at the carrier level. So that's, in a real nutshell, what Symbility uh, does and has done historically. And as mentioned earlier, uh, we were acquired, uh, the deal closed in December of this past year by CoreLogic. And uh, for us, it's pretty exciting times right now as we dive deeper into all of the different systems and capabilities and data that we have access to as part of the CoreLogic family and what that means to our existing customers and what we can offer to future customers in market. Yeah, I think that everybody who is uh, both a, um, who uses your technology or is thinking about it is real curious about what does that mean that you were um, acquired by CoreLogic and how, how is that an advantage, I'll ask you? Well, in, uh, CoreLogic's a, a, a large company that's been around for a great deal of time, but less familiar to many. Their focus has been on, I would say, the mortgage side of the business. But every penny of their $2 billion of revenue is focused on, focused on property. Um, so their, their goal is to help uh, the average person find, acquire, and protect your largest asset, which is your home. So <clears throat> what we uh, focus on is is attempting to power all of those trusted property moments that you have. And that includes the moment when you decide to either rent or purchase a home and work with a real estate agent. CoreLogic uh, has systems and data that wow. uh, support 1.2 million real estate agents in market. And then once you've found and acquired your property, your home, um, you need a mortgage, more likely than not. And CoreLogic is working with over 9,000 banks and lenders. So the entire lending community and real estate community works daily with CoreLogic. Uh, MLS systems are, are powered by the CoreLogic data and so forth. And with that, uh, we're already working with 500 PNC carriers. Um, and probably what's, what's most uh, interesting yet less known is right. the tax that people pay typically through their lender, through their bank, when it comes to their their monthly mortgage payment includes principal and interest on the mortgage, but it often includes the, the property tax. CoreLogic is the facilitator of those payments. So they are facilitating the payment of $130 billion of tax payments annually, disseminating it to 22,000 different tax jurisdictions. So what excites me as you know, little old uh, monoline civility focused on claims and claims alone is getting access to every aspect of a consumer's journey through the, the property world and, and how we can connect that uh, at claim time uh, and how our systems can support any, any aspect of that journey. So it's, it's, a, it's a really uh, fascinating time for us. Yeah, that is really amazing whenever you think about all of the data that is at your fingertips now with this, um, you know, coming together of core logic and, and stability because really what you're doing is trying to put together uh, the, the house after a catastrophe, after a loss, you're trying to put it back together. And now you're going to have all this data of knowing what it was like right before the loss or as close to. Um, I did not know that core logic was uh, a part of all those things that, that that you were saying and it kind of made me think is is core logic just mostly in america or is it or is it worldwide core logic is primarily in america and uh, would certainly have their most uh, robust data sets in, in the u.s but they also operate in canada australia and new zealand they have uh, operations in the uk they have uh, uh, operations on continental europe as well so they are global in nature but uh, primarily a u.s based business um, now what what about symbility were were, were y'all mostly american or worldwide um 
The our revenue is split uh, about forty percent um, U.S. and the remainder worldwide. I think the the complement to CoreLogic was was a good fit in that many of the markets that Symbility was already operating in are the same markets where CoreLogic has a footprint. So we um, started in Canada, um, out of Toronto and Montreal, and uh, quickly, like any good Canadian business, you immediately want to get access to the U.S. market because it's the largest right. in the world. Right. And so we expanded into the U.S. And from there, uh, went overseas, started in the U.K., um, moved across to the continent in Germany and Belgium, and then uh, started reaching even further into places like South Africa, Australia, and New Zealand. And what's interesting is uh, in Australia and New Zealand, uh, CoreLogic was our uh, reseller. Uh, So they were working through their offices. They have data sets for labor material pricing in those markets, which we ingested into our platform, and a robust sales team. So they they were actually integrating us into that market um, prior to the acquisition. So we've been we've been working together with CoreLogic for a number of years as partners. Um, the database of labor material prices uh, we get from CoreLogic we've had that now for six years, and so we've been partners in a number of ways. So this is a new acquisition, and yet so much of what we've been doing is already in place. Uh, our systems are integrated. We have a seamless flow of information from their underwriting platform through our claims platform, and um, and there's, uh, uh, you know, a great many things that we already had in place and, and relationships with the folks. So it's in some ways very new and others, it's kind of old hat. Yeah, well, you know, I've done a lot of research on uh, on this move and I did see that, that y'all were able uh, to already have a relationship before this. Uh, so it looks like the integrations and all those don't have to be new, uh, that they've already been in place. You know, a lot of a lot of our podcasts really revolve around data, uh, never uh, in- intentionally, but a lot of times we talk about where's the future of claims, what's going on, and everyone always talks about data, either obtaining the data or working through the data. And it sounds like you now, you know, with, with some ability at your fingertips, you you now have access to all this data. Uh, and I'm just curious, what do you what do you plan to do with it? You know, how how what 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 is new on the on the horizon for Symbility where you're going to start uh, bringing this data into the platform to help out the 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 end user? Well, there's a couple of areas. Um, I think um, two things. First of all, having access to the data that um, starts at that first moment of looking for a home and carries through the mortgage process, carries through the insurance, uh, binding process and underwriting process. And, you know, come claim time, having it all at the ready, um, an effort to streamline that claim operation when that time comes by virtue of all the data you've accumulated all along. And that, that's, that's powerful. Uh, I think you can you can speed the process up immeasurably by having access to all that data in advance. Um, but if you go beyond um, just the claims uh, workflow, one of the areas that we're most excited about by being part of CoreLogic is being uh, part of a company's growth strategy. We've always been focused on claims and and efficiencies and um, really a cost takeout measure. Um, Never been able to see, be seen as one that could help a a business grow. But that's different now. Uh, And what excites me is the fact that we know within 60 minutes of you listing your home that it's on the market. And being able to share that data, and we have 100% permissible use, with an insurance company to help them not only possibly upsell into uh, somebody who's obviously going to be reviewing their own insurance needs, but at a minimum, retain the customer. I think sometimes insurance companies wake up one day and, and their policyholders left. They've gone somewhere else. They're not sure why. Well, the reason can often be that they bought a new house and they had different needs. Uh, so giving them that that heads up that this house is now on the market, uh, let's work together uh, to see how we can help you maintain and expand that relationship. 
Uh, and that expands over to the contractors as well, right? Whenever a, a, a home goes for sale, uh, the acquirer may be looking to do some renovations as they come in. The seller may need to do some some touch-ups to get it on the market. Um, and there's an opportunity to provide a lead uh, to a contractor. I mean, in essence, at CoreLogic, we're, we're looking to our customers and their needs. And so if we have valued partners, uh, whether they're, uh, contracting firms, insurance companies, or, or whomever in the in the ecosystem, that we can introduce to that ultimate policyholder or, or home buyer to ease that process for them. Well, then they win. Uh, we all win, and that's uh, so that that's a pretty exciting aspect. No, it's not a small deal, uh, but it's uh, you know, and it's something that uh, as the as the insurance industry begins to properly integrate their own business, I mean, I, I've spent my whole career in, in the insurance business. I studied actuarial science. It's kind of the only place you go. And uh, I can tell you it's been so uh, disjointed, as, as I'm sure you guys know, walking into an insurance company and the, the number of silos that exist. Um, the technology that's being provided now and this ability to move data from one side to the other is really uh, breaking down a lot of those internal barriers. And uh, so this this is, you know, this goes hand in hand with that. We can help those companies further break down those internal barriers by having the underwriting teams working closely with the with the uh, with the acquisition teams, with the claims teams, all of them working off of one single file that's moving through the company that we're providing. Yeah, you know, I, I like that. You know, you're you bring up uh, an issue that we have uh, within our industry, and that's open and close, that sharing of data or not sharing with data. And, you know, there's there's a thought out there that some companies are more open to sharing and some companies are not as open to sharing or not as accessible. Um, really talk to us, you know, I and I feel as though I'm right, and if I'm wrong, please tell me. But, but Symbility was really founded upon an open API, uh, really creating that openness between companies, allowing for a single platform is that right yeah absolutely we uh, when we started our business we had uh, an open um, cloud-based platform which uh, i will admit in the early days was was challenging there were many companies that said you know we cannot let the data leave our servers and and give them to you somewhere out in the cloud um, and i think over time uh, it's become the norm and it's uh, Right, that's that's history, but it it made made it difficult in the early days, but that's that's always been um, the way we operated, and having um, open and published APIs allowing other systems to integrate onto our platform was key. We knew that we would never be all things to all people, and we wanted to have a platform that enabled the insurance company to choose uh, which other third-party systems and companies they wanted to work with. So, you know, r regardless of which uh, adjusting firms, contracting firms, we certainly could uh, implement our system for all of those companies. But if you wanted other third parties, as I mentioned before, um, there's a long and ever-growing list of, of drone companies now, for example, that... Um, if an insurance company says we want to work with with uh, Loveland, uh, then okay, we'll uh, we'll integrate to that company. If they want to work with uh, Hover, if they want to work with Eagle, Eagle View, it, it, it's it's really up to them. Um, we believe completely in customer choice, and even as part of CoreLogic, um, CoreLogic offers a product called Sky Measure that is an aerial image provider uh, and competes with a, a long list of other companies I've just mentioned, and yet uh, we'll integrate with whomever the company's choosing because, again, it's about customer choice. And um, I, yeah, so so it really seems like a very open uh, platform, uh, competitor or not, that you're willing to to work with them. And I think that's that's fascinating. It, it really brings up another question on. Uh, you know, whenever you are integrating with a company and opening that API for data to pass back and forth, what are the se security measures that have to be there? Are, are there certain ones? Well, that's that's something that we've had to be very cognizant of from the start. Uh, if, if, as I mentioned earlier, while it was difficult in the early days to allow 
uh, people to move data across to us because of their fear, we had to assure that we were uh, very bulletproof from a security perspective. And so one of the measures that we took is to get uh, full ISO certification. Um, and and that's something that we have globally. We are GDPR compliant in Europe, for example. Um, these are a set of standards. The International uh, Standardization Organization has been putting together for many, many years. It's an organization that was born in the 40s. So working within those confines and getting that uh, certification and compliance where needed uh, is a big checkbox for a lot of insurance companies, for a lot of companies that want to do business with us so that they can be certain that the data that's going onto our platform is secure. And what's better still about that is that while there's there's a new cool insure tech company born every month and there's a bunch of kids in their basement building something that uh, can help revolutionize our business. I <laughs> And, and while they're, they're, their tools are cool and companies want to try it, they're fearful, right? This is some little, you know, a, a little startup out of nowhere. Uh, what have they done to secure their data? But by integrating them onto our platform, they are now secured within the platform. So uh, one of our insurance company customers can tr test drive anybody they want. If they ask, uh, we'd like to... With confidence, yeah. So that that's it's important to us, and I think uh, I think having um, open APIs gives a lot of flexibility to the customer. They can determine which systems they want to integrate into our communication hub, which fields they want to leverage. It's really at their control, and it's at no cost other than the time it takes them to to do that integration. So we provide it uh, for free, which is the norm in the market. And I think that provides additional flexibility. Just not necessarily the norm in our market. Um, but it's changing. That, that, that has been there. And 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 let, let's talk about that for a second, because every, everybody in our industry knows that there's two main players in our industry, um, you, you and the other guy. Um, and so, I mean, that, that must be, interesting, challenging. Like you said er earlier, you're 40% domestic and 60% international. I'm sure that speaks to what your guys' strategy has been in this highly competitive market that you work in, uh, of which there's really only two, two, two significant players, right? Yeah. And I, I think for us, um, a micro cap company out of Canada, uh, it's it's a tough position to go up against a, a real Goliath uh, in the U.S. market that that has been operating in the market for 35 years or some some odd number uh, and become quite a standard in the market. So part of our um, rationale in exploring new international markets was the knowledge that uh, whoever gets that first mover uh, becomes the early standard. And when we did our research um, in various markets around the world, uh, it was quickly apparent to us that there was no, there was no um, uh, comparable, no European comparable, no Asian comparable, nothing. And so we thought uh, this was this was going to be uh, an opportunity for us to get that first mover advantage. And what an interesting story, the very first meeting we had with a, one of the top uh, UK companies, uh, they peppered us for, I think, three hours uh, walking through our system and asking us every question. And virtually every answer we had was a, was a click on the mouse. Um, and they said, gosh, you guys have thought of everything. And, and I thought to myself, we had built this for the UK market. And if they think we've thought of everything, then this is very portable and we can take this product into any market because in essence, settling a property claim, determining what it's going to cost to satisfy a policyholder and a contractor and the insurance company to get people back on their feet is kind of the same at its root around the world. Uh, lots of little nuanced differences and idiosyncrasies market to market, but it's the same kind of process everywhere. No, my comment uh, with respect to uh, global expansion is is uh, is one thing, um, but focusing on the U.S. market in particular, 
Um, there, there is a, a very uh, significant competitor, Verisk and uh, Exactware, are a formidable competitor to us. And part of the problem being that microcap company uh, out of Canada was that right. we are effectively offering a mission critical platform to an insurance company. So here are multi-billion dollar companies that uh, their life's blood, what you buy insurance for is in essence a claims process they're entrusting to right. a, a, a tiny company. And I think for some companies, you know, as much as they enjoyed our, our partnership mentality and innovative spirit, they just couldn't get over that hump. Sure. Um, so being part of a $2 billion revenue company out of Irvine, California, makes a big difference uh, in that pursuit. And the fact that CoreLogic already has relationships with virtually every insurance sure, company in the right. market, this this makes life a lot more interesting for us. It gives us more opportunity, um, even contractually, right? Uh, we've got contracts in place with all these companies. It's not a matter of going through what can be you know, many months in contract process. It's really yeah. an addendum to an existing contract. But I think at the end of the day, um, you know, we will help uh, transform this market. I think we have in some ways um, mm -hmm. with that open methodology and open platform that we have. I, I, I think it was, uh, gosh, almost two years ago now I stood on the stage at the, at the property information report, the PIR conference. Um, and I said, uh, you know, open platform, we believe in integrating with multiple countries companies and i think one day we'll even integrate with exactimate and uh, a lot of people mm -hmm. in the audience chuckled Laughed. but uh, right. but I, I i pointed to my iphone in my pocket and i said one of the apps that i use more than any other is, is google and google, google maps. maps sure and so why would why would Google uh, allow their apps to be available on an iPhone when they want to sell me an Android? And why would the iPhone that has their own mapping technologies and search technologies, why would they let me use Google? Uh, and it's because they believe in customer choice. And I think customer choice drives further adoption. So that's really what, what we believe. And at CoreLogic, as I said, we're already integrated with EagleView where we offer SkyMeasure. On the underwriting side, we're integrated to ISO 360 uh, where we offer our underwriting center. And, and there's there's a number of examples uh, now as part of CoreLogic that uh, that will foster that. I agree with you, and I agree that 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 isn't something that I would laugh at. That's something that I think is possible because who, some of it is who are you going to put at the center of the equation? Are you going to put your customer at the center of the equation? And if you are, then then in the world we live in, and with the technology the way that it is, you can customers can demand that they can insist upon it. And uh, are you going to be responsive or not? Now we found at the at the recent uh, we went to the recent exact conference. I was at your conference too, which, by the way, uh, I thought was excellent. And um, um, but they spoke about you know being more open and that the and that the um, uh, the world is demanding it, and uh, the insurance world is demanding it. And let's face it, I mean we're a slow, stodgy world in the insurance uh, universe. But things are changing, and the pace is changing. So why not? It's, I think it's entirely possible. I agree. I would agree with you. And, and I think what's driving it more than anything um, is the is the customer, is the policyholder, right? The the policyholder has expectations today that they never had a, even a decade ago, and um, they're comparing their experience with their bank. And their insurance company, and uh, but they're also comparing it with their experience with Amazon and Google and Facebook and everybody else, and and the disparity is is monstrous. Now the banks have done a pretty good job, actually, uh, in terms of getting a, a digital experience in the hands of their of their customers. And and you know even ten years ago you would have said well the banks and the insurance companies they're kind of stodgy and slow moving and and slow with digital uptake uh, but they've uh, they've really jumped to the front I think that's what's going on with insurance right now so it's it's fun to be part of it um, but customer experience I'll give you a great example we have uh, a product that we launched in the UK and uh, we call it Link it's a working name but uh, whatever company wants to brand it in another another name and it's really just an app that allows you as a claimant to follow along with the mm -hmm. process of the claim so you you have not only have access to all the information around your policy mm -hmm. but you have a, a direct contact and telephone numbers if need be for the contractor the adjuster uh, mitigator anybody that's working on the claim um, you have a tracking system 
that shows uh, where you are in the process, what day someone's coming, and you have the ability to rate uh, whoever was walking in your home. And uh, what it took us an awfully long time to get that to market. And, and ultimately, we had to start in the UK because um, – the U.S. being a little bit more litigious, uh, there's fear uh, that you know, uh, giving too much information to the policyholder might might give them uh, an opportunity to to become uh, uh, litigious in some fashion. So there was a lot of trepidation. Um, but what what we found now after a year in market is that uh, the the policyholder is absolutely loving the experience. The uh, we started with a, a company in uh, in the UK, and uh, they have done an extraordinary job of getting it out to customers. They've got about a seventy percent uh, uptake on their uh, when the when the call comes in from the claimant. They say you you can click on this link and get access to this system. Seventy percent are doing that. The call volume is dropping in half, and uh, and what's fascinating is that the the compliance from all the third parties, contractors, adjusters, and mitigators, has been mm. tremendous because now That's they great. realize that the policyholder themselves uh, is is viewing what's going on, has the ability to rate them, and uh, and if I've had you know a, a flood in my basement and and there was a team of people there in my house yesterday, and and the next day I don't see any update on the app. Then I've I've got a problem, and I make mention right. of that. Uh, so the, the the expectation of the average consumer and all the products they have on their phone right now is is instant. Amazon is an example. I mean, when you buy something, you then can track it until your doorbell rings, and you know, with the delivery guy dropping the box. And so why? This is I think one of the things that's forcing the changes in insurances is that. All the uh, all the insureds know it's out there and it's possible. So why isn't it possible with my insurance claim? Um, I, I had an experience um, last year where, where I, I had my car repaired and I took it to the repair shop. And every day they sent me an, a text message, very brief, that said, your car is, you know, X percent done. One day it was, you know, 12 percent, then it was 23, then it was 48, then it was 72, et cetera. And, um, they kept me in, informed in the whole process. It was wonderful because that's that's congruent with everything else in life. So so why should it be any different in insurance, right? I mean, that that must be what you're hearing. Uh, well, absolutely. I mean, if you can track a pizza on Domino's, surely you can track. <laughs> there you go. Where you're on your claim, <laughs> and and but the auto side uh, of the insurance spectrum has always been. Um, about a decade ahead and, and yeah, still are. Well, and you know, I, and for, for good reason, right. Uh, a, a car is well defined. There's a defined list of parts. There's only a certain number of makes and models in the world right. where, right. where all of us on the phone here, we all have a different kitchen, almost guaranteed. guaranteed. So it's infinite. The number of outcomes that our systems have to produce. But also I think the biggest difference is you take the claim to a shop uh, on the auto side. And so even before there were mobile systems, you had computers next to the loss in the repair shop and you could start building platforms that could could improve the process where it really, again, it's only been 10 years since we've been able to truly go mobile. Um, and so that's why we're as many years behind as as, uh, as we are on the property side. But it's quickly, uh, quickly keeping pace. And uh, that's, again, what makes it exciting. You know, and that, that, that really makes me wonder, where is Symbility going next? Uh, I, I understand right now you're doing a lot with the customer engagement. Is that where Symbility is going? Is there is there more to to your roadmap? It's it's very much customer experience focused. That that's kind of a catchphrase that you hear a lot. And you know, what is customer experience? It's it's customer satisfaction. It's customer care. It's customer engagement. It's it's everything rolled into one. And you know, while we can build a product like Link that focuses on the moment of claim and takes all of those sources of data that we've been able to integrate to and make them available to the policyholder and allow the policyholder to take photos, videos, communicate, text, do whatever they need to to, to move the claim along. That's fascinating. But now as part of CoreLogic, there's just so many more aspects of that data that we have. So our vision uh, is to have 
an app on everybody's phone that is effectively like the VIN number uh, for your home with every aspect of when you bought it uh, and and every aspect of, of the home itself, the property. Um, we, we have a great deal of information regarding uh, floodplain risk and, and brush fire risk and all of the, the natural hazard risk uh, that we do with our catastrophe modeling business. And <clears throat> a recent acquisition that CoreLogic did uh, just at the end of last year, around the same time as their acquisition of Simbility, was a company called Home Visit. And what Home Visit does is uh, it does a complete walkthrough of the home uh, with the uh, special cameras and the like that give you that full 360 degree uh, view of the home, almost in dollhouse like view mode. And I think if you saw this uh, for your own home, room by room in three dimensional quality, it's quite fascinating. And it's a, it's a piece of technology you would want to have and share with people uh, just out of interest sake. But then come claim time, uh, boy, does that help uh, accelerate the process. So everybody knows going in exactly uh, the dimensions of that room, uh, the materials of that room, the grade and quality. Um, uh, it helps the estimating process, helps the re rebuilding process. So that that's our, our view of the future is very much focused around that customer experience and how we can leverage all the tool sets, data sets, and capabilities that CoreLogic has to offer to bring them right to the uh, the policyholder themselves and get them engaged in the process because they'll drive further adoption. They'll they'll be the ones who who want that customer choice and the insurance companies will will respond. And that's I think what you're seeing is is insurance companies responding to what the consumer's demanding uh, because they're getting it from all the other different uh, verticals that they operate in and are sitting on their phone. Well, I think that the the combination of how fast things are moving technologically in combination with the new different um, expectations of customers and, and insureds um, combined makes this a super dynamic period that we're coming into, certainly for people like yourself and ourselves who've been around in this business for a long time. Change has not been one of its hallmarks, um, but I think that um, that evolution is, is really going to speed up. And I know that uh, one of the really smart people that I know in this business always says the people who have the da data are going to win. Absolutely. And, um, <laughs> you guys have a lot of data now, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you got married, you, you guys got uh, purchased by a data company and, uh, um, and I'm sure that there's even more ideas that you guys haven't even dreamed of yet that, that will, uh, that are waiting to happen. Well, another idea that I think CoreLogic is uniquely positioned for is to help streamline the process at claim time when that check is cut. Uh, so often the check uh, from the insurance company goes to the policyholder. The policyholder then has to forward it on to the lender to get their counter signature. The lender may be concerned that the claim is being done appropriately, the rebuild is being done on, on a property they, they may own the majority of, and so they'll sit on it. They'll sit on it for sometimes over a month just to ensure that the process has happened. Then they'll need to hire somebody to go and investigate, appraise whether that was done properly. It's a very cumbersome process. So the insurance company can, can do wondrous things with technology uh, on, on the front end, and then it comes to that moment Moment and everything can break down. And, and who takes the blame but the insurance company because it's an insurance claim. So having a company like CoreLogic that already has a relationship with 9,000 lenders, which is virtually everybody in the market, and every insurance company, surely uh, we're looking at ways that we can streamline this process and leverage those systems that are already facilitating the tax payments in all of the tax jurisdictions. There's got to be a way to improve that process and, and streamline it. That, that is probably one area um, that I'm most intrigued by because I've always asked the question, well, why is that such a burden? In any event, that, that's that's an area which I find fascinating. I think there's got to be a way to improve that. It just means coordinating effort with all of the lenders and insurance companies, which we're looking forward to doing. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, from from where we sit, your future, your guys' future is really bright. We're big simbility and users. We appreciate that. I don't know where we rate in your in your usage list, but I'm sure that we're you know somewhere towards the top and. Um, 
I know that from the from this from the size of the check we write you guys every month. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I had to get that in. Absolutely. I mean, I had to. We appreciate but no, seriously, your seriously, you guys, you guys provide great service to us. You're wonderful to work with and to communicate with. Uh, you know, speaking as users, frequent users of your product, and um, and we look forward to a great future. I have I have one last important question to ask you, and that is, fluent in German, true or false? Ich kann Deutsch sprechen, obwohl es seit Jahren. <laughs> I, uh, I lived in Germany for a couple of years working for a German reinsurance company. So and, uh, and you picked it up really in a short time. I, it was it was uh, it was a long time ago. It was actually when okay. the wall came down. That's how long ago it was. Wow, I'm dating myself wow. now. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, well, you I think, could have been I think four. Uh, you could have been six years old. <laughs> <laughs> no, this I was in my twenties. I was working, but uh, I think today you find a lot more um, people speaking fluent English in in all of the right. European markets um, than than you did uh, 30 years ago. Uh -huh. And uh, you know. Good Good example would be I couldn't go to a movie theater uh, in Cologne where I lived and see a movie in its original language. Every movie was mm -hmm. dubbed. It wasn't mm -hmm. subtitles with original language. It was dubbed. So uh, you really were forced to immerse mm -hmm. yourself in the language, which for me was very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people simply did not speak English. So that was life. Uh, but I benefited from it. So I, I, I think that's I think it's cool to speak another language. And uh, German's probably a very practical one, actually. And uh uh, well, listen, we, we've used up a bunch of your time and, and, uh, we really appreciate you sharing with us. Like we've said, we're, we're big users and big admirers of your company and what you guys have been able to do and look forward to continuing our partnership into the future. And we certainly appreciate the, the work we do with you guys, your input, your feedback is always very straightforward and candid. And, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to your listeners. And maybe we'll Thanks. see, maybe we'll see you in Indianapolis, huh? Definitely will. Okay, we'll look forward. Look to for it. the CoreLogic booth. Okay. Oh, there you go. That's right, because you're an executive. That's right. That's right. Thank, okay. thank you well, so listen. much for being a part. Thanks, James. Thanks very much, guys. You know, Lee, um, it's interesting. We've had the the both the chiefs, whatever their exact title is, of the two estimating platforms on now. And it's, they're, they're a little different from each other. Wouldn't yeah, you agree? I would. I, you know, but I also think that their, their common goals uh, really appear to be aligning more than, uh, yes. than, than they were in the past. Right, right, right. I think that that's one of the things that, that, that there's more choice in the industry. There's so much more choice, which means there's really less choice uh, right. about how you have to go about being in the future which is really what this podcast is an example of. Sure. You know, I thought it was interesting to talk to James about the open platform. Uh, Symbility has been an open platform from the very beginning, and that was really at their core. Uh, they they want to integrate however possible uh, with mm -hmm. whatever the customer mm -hmm. needs. Uh, and mm -hmm. it sounds like they're really doing that, uh, mm -hmm. even whenever they're they're integrating with competitors. But their open right. API, uh, their, their free use, uh, to access the API, that was very interesting. Although there, there's a time element involved, uh, there's actually no financial element. So that was an interesting discussion. Right, right. And like he said, that they could, they could integrate someday with Exact, and and that people laughed at that. But I think that you, as somebody who's so technically oriented in in the claims business, you could see that, couldn't you? Sure. Yeah, I think there's a place. Uh, you know, I have used both tools. Uh, pretty intimately, and both have uh, some really great things. So I could see one day a carrier saying, I need a little of this, and I need a little of that, and I need you to talk. Uh, let's see what we can do. I mean, that 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 world may come. Uh, it may come in America, it may come outside of America, but that, that day may come. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. lots and lots um, of, of data. Data, you know, data, with, with data, 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 data. James really opened our eyes to what all they do. Uh, they actually do quite a bit more than even I understood at the time. Uh, but now Symbility is able to dive into this data uh, to really help uh, the insured and everybody know exactly where this claim has been, where this home has been. Uh, I see them working with their pricing structure to make sure that they can get uh, accurate pricing. I think that the world of data is is huge for them. And then what are they going to do with it? 
that's an article that I was reading just this morning was so much data. What do you do? And, you know, that's a struggle that we all have, but I think that they have a plan. Um, and I'm very interested to see what happens with that. Well, we even have it inside of our own company. I mean, and which is really a door that you've swung wide open at 470 is, is unlocking our data and making it actionable. Yeah, you're right. That's something that I even, again, this morning I woke up and I thought, we've opened our door to so much data. What am I doing with this data? How are we being forward thinking and making the data work for us versus using it in a reactionary way. So how can we be proactive in our moves? How can we be proactive in our deployments and our uh, understanding of, of success? What can we do with that? So within our company, we've been able to take the data and say, okay, I, I, I have so much, what do we do with this? And that's what Symbility is. And that's what all the insurance companies are doing now. They're collecting these mountain and, and lakes of data uh, and now they're saying, how can we make it work? Yeah. Well, it's right on point. Every podcast we we have done here uh, has really talked about putting the customer in, in the middle. Uh, we have to listen to the voice of the customer and how do we get them uh, engaged. It was interesting to hear a story of starting Link in the uh in the uh, Europe region because uh, Americans may have been a little too fearful of all the data that they had. We weren't ready for that. Uh, I know that they're starting to bring that over piece by piece now. And, and you know, he, he's right. Giving the, the customer what they want when they need it, uh, you can't force it down their throat and say, hey, you want to be in the know so much. Let me show you everything that we have because you're going to run them off. Uh, we have to get the actual feedback from the customer on what they want and to be able to deliver and let them be engaged in whatever they need. Well, we're super thankful to James, who um, whose company has been very generous to us over time um, and worked closely with us to develop all kinds of different programs, including, um, you know, they've been a back, part of the backbone of our virtual program, right? Yeah, yeah, we were able to test thousands and thousands of different assignments through them uh, with our reporting functionality, with our, our real-time status updates, uh, really with our customer engagement. Uh, they were really very helpful to us with a, with a particular carrier. So that brings us to the end of another episode of FNO and SureTech. We appreciate all of you all being with us today. And uh, we ask that you support us by subscribing to us. We don't have commercials. We don't have uh, sponsors other than um, our own company, which is 470. And we ask that you take the time to subscribe and listen to all of our podcasts. And until next time, say goodbye, Lee. Goodbye, everybody.